first goddamn week of winter. Just kidding, it's October 18th. But it is time for another hat review. Oh, smooth. Very smooth. Ooh, J and B, not for the faint of heart. Well, all right, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, let's jump right into it. I received a hat a couple weeks ago from Screencapped. It is a replica of the hat worn by Kurt Russell in uh, 1982's The Thing, directed by John Carpenter. This is a, a movie that I love been a fan of it for a long time and I've been planning on doing some uh, R.J. McReady cosplay. Uh, as you know, R.J. McReady is the character that Kurt Russell plays in the film. And uh, in the film he wears a giant fucking hat. It's this giant four point campaign style sombrero cowboy western, I don't know what you call it. Uh, apparently Kurt Russell hated wearing it in the movie. John Carpenter made him do it. And it's become this iconic hat, this icon iconic film hat that really, really, really uh, makes the character stand out. Um, so, a uh, little backstory. Um, I uh, have been wanting this hat for a long time. I've been wanting to do this cosplay for a long time. I had a, a couple of horror and sci-fi conventions that I was uh, due to attend. Everything, unfortunately, got canceled because of the pandemic. You know, such is life. We're all going through this crazy, crazy thing. Uh, no events, no more conventions for God knows how long. But uh, anyway, um, everything got canceled and it kind of got put on hold. Um, but I had ordered the hat um, sometime like last February or March, sometime in the spring, right about the time where all this kind of ramped up and started happening. But anyway, since all of the conventions and everything that I had planned on attending uh, got canceled, um, I decided I was going to go as uh, R.J. McReady for Halloween. Because Halloween's my favorite holiday and I am not going to not celebrate Halloween. So, uh, here we are. It's October. I just received this hat from Screencapped Leather and Hats. Uh, Brian Lalonde, my favorite hatter in the entire world, made this for me. I'm super stoked to show it to you. Um, I have notes here, I don't know why I made these, and I actually am a little bit drunk right now because stupidly, instead of filling that with like water or something, I actually filled it with whiskey, and I'm drinking that, and uh, fucking didn't eat anything today, so I'm a little bit buzzed. But hey, you know what, that's life, and we're just gonna go with that, so. Okay, real quick, so this is not going to be an unboxing, because I did receive the hat earlier this month. Um, and uh, normally I would open it, but uh, I already opened it, I couldn't wait. And I did post pictures of this hat online in a couple of the uh, Thing fan groups on Facebook, and I posted it on Brian Lalonde's uh, page, Raiders of the Lost Cosplay, which uh, is his uh, indie cosplay page. Um, he also has a page called Screen Capped Hats, which is his business page, and I posted it on both of those, and uh, it got a pretty good response. People ask for more pictures, people ask to see pictures of me dressed in the costume. So this is what I'm doing. So no unboxing, just sort of a showing it to you in a review. So without further ado, I am going to bring this hat out. Oh, drum roll. All right, this is the hat. I'm going to lower these lights so that you can see this <clears throat> in a better light. Okay, so, perfect. This is the RJ McReady hat created for me by Brian Lalonde at Screen Cap Tats. It uh, is a western style uh, four point campaign hat. Uh, the crown is damn near seven inches tall. Crazy tall. It's about seven inches. The brim, 
about four inches. Uh, it is turned up on the side, on the front and back, and slightly turned up on the sides. Um, and then, as I said, it has the four-point crown, really tall crown. Um, it's got a leather hat band that goes down through the top of the hat and becomes part of the leather chin strap. And Brian was nice enough to put an adjustable um, leather uh, chin strap on here that I can move up and down. He was careful to say this is a Thing-inspired hat. We went off screen grabs on this. Um, when Brian, when I ordered this hat, Brian had a lot of questions, I had a lot of questions. He asked me if I could post um, as many of the screen grabs from the film as I could. So I found every picture I could find from 1982's The Thing, and I posted them to him so that he had as much reference as he could muster. Um, there are two other vendors that also make this hat. Uh, Barron's, Barron or Barron's is one of them. The other one is called uh, Last Best West. Both of those um, vendors specialize in uh, Western and cowboy hats. I didn't go with them for two reasons. Uh, number one, I uh, really, really expensive. Like one of those vendors, the hat was close to like $1,000. And I think the other vendor, the hat was like in the like six to eight hundred dollar range, which, you know, I understand it's a it's a big hat, but um, not in my budget. So um, reason number two is I have ordered hats from Brian before, and they're fantastic, and I love them. He's absolutely my favorite hatter, so I went with him because I'd had previous experience with Brian um, at Screencapped and um, I have two Indiana Jones hats made by him. Um, I, I have other hats made by other vendors, but for whatever reason, Brian's hats fit my head great. They look great on me. I don't know how else to explain it, but he's, he just, his hats in my head, they just work. Uh, so, He's easy to deal with. He's responsive. I messaged the guy. He's back to me in like 10 minutes. So, and he's a perfectionist. He really, really, really um, tries hard to recreate things faithfully. Um, and uh, I, I know this one gave him a bit of a run for his money. I don't know that he's done um, a hat quite like this. Uh, he has... Uh, thus far mostly done um, Indiana Jones uh, style fedoras. I know he did a Humphrey Bogart Maltese Falcon style hat for someone which came out awesome um, but but what I'm trying to say is he's mostly done fedoras and uh, I haven't seen too many like Western hats done by him um, actually I haven't seen any Western hats done by him so I think this may have been the first one that he's done um, so I am ultra appreciative that he took this on and that he looked at it like a creative endeavor but this thing is freaking amazing right so I'm just gonna hold it up and show you it from a couple of different angles there's the side and I will probably intersperse this video with some clips from the movie just so you can see how like close this is to the hat in the um, film right Show you the top because sometimes he has it hanging on his back and there's a couple of shots of it right from the top and uh, anyways there's the inside so I'm gonna try this on first thing you'll notice is oh my god what the fuck it's super fucking huge right okay there's a reason for that I'm not stupid I know my hat size I'm a pinhead I'm six and seven eighths right well in the movie R.J. McReady, a.k.a. Kurt Russell, right? He wears this hat over a hoodie. Okay, so, and pre-pandemic, I'm going to take this off for a second. Pre-pandemic, I had planned on going as this character. I was going to be wearing, my hair was short, so I was going to wear a wig, a brown long wig, and a hoodie, and I was going to be wearing the hat over both of those things because the con that I was going to attend, I was going to go as Kurt Russell wearing the blue hoodie with the hat over it. 
Uh, but, you know, if during the convention I wanted to take the hoodie off, then I would have the wig and I still could wear the hat. So I was fully planning on wearing this over a wig and a hooded sweater. So I wear a 6 and 7 eighths hat size. It's a 20, what is it, 21, 22 inches, somewhere in there. Pretty small head. Um, I ordered, me and Brian talked about this at length. We kind of tried to figure out like how large the hat would need to be to wear it over a wig and a hoodie and have it look right. Um, and we decided on like a, something in the 59 to 61 inch range, which is kind of a, you know, an extra large hat. So that's what we went with. Okay, so fast forward to October 2020. Pandemic hair, I haven't had a haircut in eight or nine months. So my hair has gotten so long that I am pretty much at RJ McReady length now. Um, so that said, I'm still going to be wearing the, the blue hoodie, um, but no wig. So there's a little wiggle room in the hat. But I'm glad we went larger rather than too small, because if we went with too small, it would not have fit over both of those, the wig and the hoodie, or, or it wouldn't have fit over the hoodie. So. Um, I will try this on a little bit later with the hoodie so you guys can see how it looks and you'll notice, you'll, you'll see how it works, works for the character. Um, but anyway, so essentially that's the hat. Now in the movie, just some comparative things here. In the movie, the hat band is leather. This is a pretty close representation of the hat band in the movie. It's very, very close. It's like a raw, uh, more tan leather um, chin strap and hat band. Um, but in the movie, he has, like, three or four, it's really weird, and it's really specific, but he has three or four layers of paracord that wrap around the hat band, which, for obvious reasons, was too complex for Brian to probably mess with, and I, and I didn't expect him to. Um, uh, so I may at some point get some paracord and, like, do that. Um, but even, I've looked at it closely, the paracord in the movie is this really specific white paracord with like these red and blue, it has a red and blue pattern. I can't find this p particular brand of paracord, like style of paracord anywhere. Um, so I'm probably going to have to like wrap it with like light gray or white paracord and then like, like draw or paint the pattern on. Um, and that's something I might do in future, but for right now, I'm thoroughly happy with this. And I'm nitpicking. Nobody on the planet Earth is going to call me out on that. So you have to be a pretty, like, diehard Thing fan to really, like, nitpick on, on something that detailed. Um, but, and also, he asked me if I wanted him to age it up and add some dust to it. And I said, sure. So he kind of dusted that up a little bit. Because the hat in the movie, frankly, is, like... It's got a layer of frost on it throughout the entire film. So I'm trying to kind of figure out a way to make the hat look like it has a layer of frost without damaging it. Because I just got this thing and I really don't want to like wreck it. Um, so on a cosplay related note, if anybody in the comment section wants to drop a line on what I could put on this hat to give it that layer of frost look. And I don't want to spray it with... Christmas snow flocking and I don't want to like add like spray paint to it so I'm not doing that but um, my only thought was like cornstarch because that shit when I cook gets on everything but it also kind of brushes off pretty easily um, if this was an Indiana Jones hat I would be sprinkling this liberally with um, Fuller's Earth but Fuller's Earth is kind of beige-ish and I need something white and so I was thinking like of dusting of cornstarch and seeing if that gives it like a frosted effect um, if anybody's tried that or has any ideas about how to make this look like it has a frost layer on it without damaging the hat, uh, let me know. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about this hat? It's beaver felt, beaver felt, um, and Brian went with a western grade felt, which I guess is probably sturdier and thicker. So, very robust. Yeah, I mean, I could go on, but, you know, I'd be dragging it out. So, that's essentially it. Um, if you are in the market for a fedora or another type of hat, um, I would highly recommend Screen Capped. The dude does great work. Um, really, really fantastic hatter. So, 
Hey, who wants to see me in full RJ McReady garb? <laughs> I know I do. Let's do it. McReady! Hey, get your gear on! Set this right here. I'm gonna go get the rest of the stuff and we'll 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 try the whole ensemble. Alright? Let's do it. And the piece de la resistance. McCready's hat. And you can see that with the hoodie over my hair, it actually fits pretty well. So this is Mac in chopper flying mode. When he's in his helicopter, he is wearing the hat. If he's hanging around camp, you might see him with it around his back, like that. Alright. Yeah, he might take his hood off. But I can't do that because I tied it so damn tight that I can't get it off my head, so we'll just leave it on. <laughs> Alright. With the sun coming over those clouds, we're going to get a whiteout. If that happens, you can scratch one doctor and one pilot. Quit the griping, McCready. You really want to save those crazy Swedes, eh, Doc? That Swedish man can all lose it. And then if you want to put it back on your head, you just go... Whoop! Bing! And if you're really mad because your fellow members of Outpost 31 are pissing you off, you can say something like... You can say something like... Alright, cut the bullshit! Alright, cut the bullshit! And then you can be like, I'm go, fuck you, I'm going up. And then you storm out all mad. McReady style. All right. McReady's campaign hat sombrero. Screen cap leather and hats. Brian Lalonde. Check him out. J&B Whiskey. Terrible fucking stuff, but good enough for R.J. McReady helicopter pilot, U.S. Outpost North 31. Good enough for me. I just want to go back to my shack and get drunk. This has been another J.D. Johnson cosplay hat review. Fortune and glory, kids. Fortune and glory. Oh, <laughs> oh,